There are five things that separate the people who actually make it in network engineering from those who give up in six months. And no, it's not about being a genius or having a computer science degree. It's about understanding what this field actually requires before you jump in. I've talked to hundreds of people trying to break into networking and the ones who struggle all have one thing in common. They don't know what they're actually getting into. So whether you're still deciding if this is the right path for you or you're already studying, these five things are going to save you a lot of frustration and a lot of potential years of wasted time. So let's get into it. So one of the things you have to know when you become a network engineer is that you're not just plugging cables. You actually have to think. You're not gonna be some command line jockey who, who throws configs on the CLI. You're actually going to have to critically think. And critically thinking is not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing because here's the thing. Jobs that require critical thinking show that you actually are valuable and can't really get automated. So a lot of people are scared of AI, AI this, AI that. Luckily with, with, with networking, a little bit hard to automate that because there's a huge risk of causing a potential outage. And that huge risk sometimes isn't worth automating that to someone else. Yes, human error does exist, but they need someone to blame. If automation can cause a horrific error, especially with AI agents and all that stuff, that's kind of why uh, in networking, you have to think. And thinking is going to be part of the job. And it does take time to, to, to build that skill set as a network engineer. So that's some, one of the things that you have to have to know. And you can't live without that skill set. It's one of the most important skill sets in networking and skill set that kind of changed my life because before ever becoming a network engineer myself, most of my jobs required zero critical thinking. I worked at the airport as a, as a baggage handler. I worked at security. Those kind of jobs, you're just kind of just following the system that they laid out. Do this, do this, do this, pick up this bag, do that, do this, whatever. Working in security, just sit down behind a desk, wait, wait for anything to happen, call the police if anything happens. This kind of job requires much more critical thinking, thinking outside the box. And that's good. That's good that it keeps your brain fresh, it keeps you excited, it keeps you want to learn more. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I definitely recommend networking is because it definitely does require critical thinking. And that's one of the huge things I recommend. And also you have to remember, you're not going to need to be some guy who just plugs cables, you know, doesn't really do much. You're, you're going to have to not only do the potential cabling part, but you're going to have to do the logic part with the CLI. Another thing you have to know about networking is troubleshooting is about 70 to 80% of the job. You may be wondering, oh, I just got my CCNA, I'm ready to go. But a lot of you guys who have your CCNA probably have never troubleshooted in your life because the CCNA doesn't have any troubleshooting stuff. It just has theory about troubleshooting, but not active showing you how to troubleshoot a particular issue. And let me tell you this, troubleshooting is 90% to 70% of the job because you're going to be doing that a lot. You're going to be on calls. You're going to be fixing things. You're going to have to fi fix things when go things go bad. You're going to be on call to fix things that, that are inconvenient times to fix. There's a lot of different things you have to do as a network engineer that you might not know, which is that, you know, fixing those particular issues. And troubleshooting is one of the easiest ways to learn. My manager used to always tell me, hey, Wally, I, the best way to learn is by troubleshooting. It's almost like fixing a puzzle and, and trying to learn on your own. I'm like, that makes sense. Like, that makes a lot of sense to do that, like that that puzzle analogy, because when you're watching videos and someone is already, you're maybe doing a lab and you're just building it up, sure, that's fun to do, but ima imagine someone messes that lab for you, like destroys it, makes them put some incorrect configurations, and then asks you to fix that. That's real life experience, and that's exactly in my program what I offer. In my program, I pretty much teach people how to actually become network engineers, not just CCNA certified, but actually how to become network engineers by doing actual real tangible labs that are actually real labs that I face as a network engineer. If you guys are interested in that, go ahead and click the link in the description. But all I'm trying to say is troubleshooting is like a lot of the job. A lot of people don't teach it because they don't people know how to teach it or how to even do it without real job experience. And that's exactly what I teach. So definitely troubleshooting is going to be huge. Something that I recommend you guys learn how to do. It is going to be a skill that requires a lot of critical thinking as well. So that's one big thing I would say about networking. Another thing I want to tell you is the money opportunities are real. I remember when I started off as a network engineer, I was about making about 70-ish K, 75 to, you know, around 80 K, around that mark. And you know, I realized, I thought that was like amazing like in terms of salary until I realized there's other network engineers making double that salary. And I was like, really? Like, I couldn't believe that because I used to come from someone who's worked at the airport for like 15 an hour, security, like 15 an hour, wasn't really making much. And then I realized like, wait a minute, I can get into networking and make, you know, some decent money. And people tell you, oh, network engineers don't get paid enough. It's because you're not either good at negotiating your salary, which you can always negotiate your salary for at least 20% more, or you just, you know, look into the wrong market or whatever you're doing incorrectly, there's something wrong, right? Networking jobs can get paid quite well, especially if the company has a lot of deep po has deep pockets and are willing to pay. You can find those positions, right? I I've seen network engineers make over 200K a year, right? Obviously, you're going to have to need some experience. Obviously, obviously, those are senior network engineer positions, but you can become a senior in three years, right? The position I got was a senior network engineer position, and I only been working for three years. So anyone tells you, oh, you have to 
be a, you know, you have to be in the industry for 20 years it means absolutely nothing. And 20 years ago, the industry was completely different. So you're, you know, if you have the skills and I always say the skills pay the bills, especially in networking, if you have the right skills, you're going to be able to land a job because right now networking right now to this day is still an undersaturated field. Everyone else is running to cyber. Everyone else is running the cloud. Everyone else is running to software engineering, AI, whatever field they're all running to these fields. Us network engineers, we have a huge advantage because not that many people know about it. Even your traditional cybersecurity guy who went to cybersecurity for school, maybe took a networking class, has no idea how great the network engineering job market is if you actually know where to look and how to land jobs, right? And that's where a lot of my students are able to land jobs um, as a network engineer. So definitely going to say you're going to have to learn those skills and they're very important to, to learn, right? They're very important to learn because those opportunities are real and those opportunities are going to monetarily benefit you. So that's all I'm trying to say. Another thing about networking is you cannot hide or run as a network engineer. You're going to be blamed for whatever outage that you committed. Whatever outage you committed, you're going to be blamed no matter what. And that is totally fine. If you're blamed for an outage, it's totally fine. Like my first ever outage, I incorrectly configured an IPv6 address with the incorrect subnet mask. Originally, it was a slash 20, 127 subnet mask on the IPv6 address. And I ended up doing a slash 12 that caused a huge outage, 40,000 customers impacted. It wasn't fun to have that call on a Friday with your manager and director, but you're always going to be blamed. You can't hide. Your configurations are going to be seen. There's always going to be like a log of information that you've done in the, on, on the devices. You want to protect the network as a network engineer. Very important that you do that. And the last thing I want to talk about, last thing you need to know about network engineering is it is the most respect driven field. There's a lot of people that I know that are network engineers that are very well respected. Networking is one of the most respected fields in all of tech. Whether you're in cloud, cyber, whatever, if you say you're a network engineer, people are going to, and so to be cap to you and salute you to say, hey, <laughs> you're a network engineer, congratulations. Like, uh, you're you're an amazing person because they realize, first of all, we have so much power as a network engineer. We can shut off a whole network and cause havoc as a network engineer. And it's a very unique field in tech, which has that hardware aspect to it. A lot of people forget we're touching actual physical devices that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, cables that are under the water that are millions and billions of dollars going from ocean to ocean, uh, from land to land, right? And it's absolutely amazing. And as a network engineer, we have to take precedence in that. We have to understand how important that is. We also have to understand understand what we're doing is something of value and we are very respected as network engineers and you should you know you know whenever you see a network engineer we all share the same you know life in a sense the same you know issues that we face all the time so that's all i'm trying to say and when it comes to that so those are some of the things i want you guys to know before becoming a network engineer now you know the five things the question is what are you going to do with this information because the knowledge without action is literally just entertainment if you're serious about this path and you want a structured path with someone who's actually done it and actually going to guide you step by step i actually have a mentorship program that shows people exactly how to go from stuck confused to actually becoming a six-figure network engineer if you guys are interested in that, please click the link in my description to learn more information about that. But regardless, whether you're new to this or not, please take the information that I give in this video because it's going to be very valuable information. And if you guys like the video, also give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. But I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and peace.